Hired. I'm Angela Lucier. This is episode two. On today's episode, you'll learn how to answer the question, why should I hire you, which inevitably always comes up. We'll have an interview with someone who said, I'm not going to take this shit anymore, and I'm ready to start something I'm excited about, and I want to contribute in a different way. And I will also talk to you about how to get promoted with these five easy secrets. And of course, the blank of the day. which 
you know me, I'm not one to sit at a desk at all times. And no. Um, at that time, I got sick and tired of uh, looking for this dream job, so I just kind of said F it and kind of started building the Creative Strategy Agency, which is the first business I had. And from there, it just kind of, once the ball's rolling in my head, I just keep going. And um, January, I launched Strictly Business, which was the show to help me promote the marketing company, which evidently led me to the business channel. Right. Okay. So tell me about the moment when you realized that this regular 9 to 5 job was not going to work for you and you had to do something different. Like, what were the thoughts going through your mind and some of the fears you had? Um, well, when I wanted to have a drink every day, I wanted to get out of work, that was a problem. Um, <laughs> basically, you know, I wasn't happy, like towards, the, I was only there for about six months, and by even the second or third month, I was, my family saw it, my friends saw that I just was not enjoying this job. I had the job because I had bills, but I was not happy. The second I started work, secretly working on building the company, that's when like, the spark in me was, like, my friends and my family saw everything normal again with me. I had that spark and that's what, you know, it made me happy kind of making money for myself and not for someone else. So. Yeah. so step number one, if you're drinking every day, it's possible <laughs> you don't like your job. Yes. <laughs> it's a stress, well, it's a stress relief. You know what I mean? You're tired, but you're like, you, you just want to have a drink to kind of get the edge off and then go home. Um, not, don't become an alcoholic. Like, that's not what I'm saying. But, no, but that may be a clue that yeah, you don't exactly. really like what you're doing all day. Yeah. So what were some of the sacrifices you had to make? Because that's a question I get often like from people who work 9 to 5, they have a steady paycheck, they say, well, I might not be making the same amount of money and I don't want to sacrifice the lifestyle I have today. So what were some of the sacrifices you had to make and what were, what was your response to that? Was it like, oh, it wasn't a big deal to begin with or it's not a big deal because I have the job I want or how did that work? Leisure expenses. I wasn't <laughs> being able to do what I want when I want because I was at that. I was a moment in life of like I'm gonna make this work. I gotta make it work. So all the extra funds I had went into the company. So I wasn't going out as much. I wasn't going on any trips. Um, I wasn't, you know, spending money on ridiculous things I didn't need. If it didn't benefit the company, I wasn't spending money on it. Um, and I sacrificed that for the first year or so just to, you know, build the company. And um, I think that's what a lot of people need to know is that you got to make some kind of sacrifices. You can't. If you're used to making thirty-six thousand dollars a year and then you stop all of a sudden and you're, you want to start your business, don't expect to make thirty-six thousand dollars a year in the first first couple months. So um, it's just adjusting, learning when to spend and what to spend it on. Mm -hmm. And do you have any regrets? Um, I wish I could catch up sooner. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I don't have any regrets. I'm the type that you know, I as corny as the saying is, everything happens for a reason and. Uh, maybe I was put in, I, in that job, in that position to realize like that's not what I was supposed to do and this is what I was meant to do and it kind of that scared me in the right direction. So. Mm -hmm. I think people like you are a very good um, role model for people who are in jobs who are like, oh my god, I'm going to die if I have to come in. And then they just keep coming in. Um, and so hearing your story is definitely, um, it's a big motivator and I think can help to light the fire. So what advice do you have for people who are thinking about taking the plunge but aren't sure? Uh, first, don't take the plunge just thinking about it. You know, you want to make sure. It took me a month and a half of planning starting the business before I actually launched the business. Um, I went from about two months of planning and then I had the big launch party. Um, and that's when I quit the job is when I had the launch party. Um, so it took me two months of behind the scenes of getting everything ready, starting to work with clients before I even had the official business launch. Um, so, you know, plan it out accordingly. Don't just say I'm going to start a business, quit your job, and then sit there and be like, <laughs> I kind of, I mean, you can, if, I just, for me, like, I'm the type that I, there's got to be a rhyme of reason. I plan everything, hence the name Stra Creative Strategy Agency. Um, <laughs> I plan everything out. So make sure when you know what you want to do, do it. Um, the next tip I have is, you know, don't be afraid to do something different. You know, point in case to the business channel, it's something that no one really is doing, um, especially in Western Mass, so don't be afraid to do it. Uh, just, you know. Go with your heart more than your head. Um, everything else will kind of follow. If you know in your gut is telling you to do something, just do it. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. There are a lot of business books out there. You know, Jack Welch, um, written by the marketing gurus of our time, mm -hmm. and everybody seems to have a different secret for success. Can you tell me yours, just to kind of close this up and share that one piece of wisdom that has moved you along through the years and you feel is the really number one contributor to your success? 
Um, I have a great backbone with family and friends. They, you know, it's, you know, I'm lucky where they kind of believe in everything that I do. And, you know, everyone has those lives when you have the up and downs and, you know, with they're there for the ups and the downs. And uh, when I wanted to do this, they all backed me. And, uh, you know, especially my parents, they, I come from an entrepreneurial family, so I didn't fall into the restaurant business like every other Italian. But me wanting to do my own thing in my own way, parents are completely happy with, and uh, they supported me, and they still are. Uh, not financially, supporting me, like, you know, emotionally and whatnot. Um, you still get an <laughs> Yes, I need gas in the car, come on. Um, they, you know, and it's good to have that core group where you can kind of just bounce ideas off of, just talk with, um, you know, and I have that, I have that group of friends, and within that group of friends, I have about three or four that I can really trust and kind of bounce ideas off of. So I think they really helped me kind of, and they were truthful with me with everything along the way, so it kind of helped me kind of move forward. Well, there it is. There's the interview with the success story, Alfonso Sanzanello, who's making it happen. If you are in a situation where you want to make a change, but you're not sure how, follow some of Al's advice, and hopefully we'll see you on the other side. Yeah. This segment is called The Wild Card, and I always change it up to give you something different to think about and to change your approach to your career and your job search, if it is indeed your job search at this time. So what I'm going to tell you today is how to get promoted with these five easy secrets. Most people think that getting promoted is out of their hands, like they'll get tapped on the shoulder by a supervisor one day who will magically say, you've been doing a great job, do you want a, a promotion? That rarely happens, and so rather than waiting for a job to open up and then applying for it, there are ways you can create opportunities within your company to make more money, get more responsibility, and be seen by the people who are making the decisions. So I'm going to give you those five secrets today. The first part is, as I just mentioned, is to be seen. If you're the type of person who comes into work on time, walks right over to your desk, does all your work, at five o'clock you turn off your computer and you leave, you're not doing anything to be seen. Do something to get out there and be seen by the employees, your colleagues, and also the decision makers. Ways to do that is to recognize where the problems lie in the company or the deficiencies. So if you see that the um, the sales team doesn't really know how to use Microsoft Excel, and they need that because customers send their orders in using that program, and you know that program, create a one-hour training during lunch one day and invite the sales team to come and learn how to use Microsoft Excel. It costs the company nothing, it costs you nothing, it's no extra time, and it gives a huge benefit to all the people on that team who don't know how to use that program. And that goes for so many other skills, it could be public speaking, it could be team building, it could be communication. Whatever skill you have that you see other people, it may be a weakness for them, you can bring that to the table and then create ways to be seen within the company. So that's secret number one. Secret number two is to think about the big picture. As I said, you're the type of person who walks in, goes to your desk, does your work, and leaves. That means you're accomplishing your own goals, but are you focused on the goals for the company? Are you thinking about what they're trying to accomplish every day as a team the global opportunities and how you can build the business. If you're not, then you're missing a huge opportunity to get promoted. So think about what the bigger picture is, where can you contribute, and how can you change your job description a little bit to help um, on a bigger scale. The third secret is to make sure that the company's best interests are at heart. You know, we think, well, we're, um, you come in and you're doing your own job and you're doing a great job at it, but you're not really thinking about how you can really impact the company in a bigger way and are, is what you're doing each day really helping to advance the company. If you know that something you're spending half your time doing isn't really that important, but you're not speaking up and saying anything, then in essence you're wasting the company's money and you're wasting your time. So think about how you can change things by putting the company's best interests at heart and that will help you to be seen as a team player. Um, another thing to do is to get known by the decision makers, and that doesn't necessarily mean the same thing as being seen or setting up a trainer, but or training, but by creating ways to interact with decision makers and giving them resources. So if you know that there's a big trade show coming to town that's in your industry, or if you know of networking events taking place that could benefit the VPs or CEO in your company, go and tell them about it. Let them know that there's something important that could help build your business and become known as a resource for them. If I'm not saying anything, then again, you're losing an opportunity to build that connection. Another secret is to inquire about advancement opportunities. Go to your HR department and ask about what kinds of jobs are available at a higher level than yours. 
And if there are none posted, ask them if they know of anything coming up. Oftentimes, they're the people who are in the loop and they know about um, people who are retiring, people who are thinking about relocating, um, maternity leaves, things that could offer opportunities for you to move up without them necessarily being advertised yet. And this last bonus secret is to write your own job description and then make a case as to why they need you. If you see a hole in the company and you have the skills to fill it, but there's no job for that role, then write your own job description and propose the job to your boss or another decision maker within the company. Just because it doesn't exist doesn't mean that it can't exist. So give yourself the opportunity to advance by creating that. Um, to, so again, to quickly go over the top five secrets, be seen, think big picture, make sure the company's best interests are at heart, get known by the decision makers, inquire about advancement opportunities, and the bonus is to write your own job description for the job you want. Good luck. The blank of the day is Prezi. It's a, it's a website for creating slideshows. If you're sick of PowerPoint, if you're sick of seeing it, and you're sick of using it, introduce Prezi into your work life and introduce it to your colleagues and friends. It will change the way that you do slideshows because it's not all about um, one slide with text and images or a video. It's one big whiteboard in essence and you're putting information all over it and then you're scrolling all over the screen to offer the information throughout the slideshow. Consider using this if, you're gonna, if you want to change your approach to presentations and add a little bit of kind of flavor to what you're talking about without making it boring using PowerPoint which offers limited opportunities in making a really big, huge visual impact. Thanks for watching Hired. Next week you'll learn the number one barrier to success as I've discovered by talking with thousands of professionals and you'll also learn how to overcome that barrier. We'll also do an interview with someone who has a job that you want and you'll learn the one huge and simple strategy that 99 out of 100 job seekers aren't doing. That's all next time on Hired.